Hey folks, JR, back for another episode of Fallen Badge. It's going to be the murder of Officer Martoya Lane. It's December 14th, 2012. Following information come from the appellate court December 14, 2012 at approximately 8 a.m. Members of the Memphis Police Department were tasked with executing a search warrant for drugs that were allegedly being sold out of the residence located on Mendenhall Cove in Memphis, Tennessee. Target of the warrant was an individual known by the nickname Little Two. Prior to executing the warrant, the officers were advised that the residence was known for gang activity and that weapons were likely present. The officers were also concerned that any drugs present in the house might be destroyed before they could be seized. Based on these facts, the officers obtained a no-knock warrant and decided to enter the house in a tactical stack formation. Actually, when you're executing a search warrant, you're always going to be in a tactical stack. Per procedure, a tactical stack formation consisted of the initial officer carrying a police shield for protection and followed by five other armed officers. On the day in question, Officer Goodwin carried the shield and was followed by Officer Mobley, who was armed with a shotgun and responsible for protecting Officer Goodwin. Officer Vrooman and Officer Lang followed Officer Mobley. Sergeant Dotson and Officer Dobbins carried the realm and the pick and were responsible for opening the door, after which they would fall in line behind Officer Vrooman. In addition to the officers who entered the house, four other officers were stationed around the perimeter of the residence. As the officers reached the front door of the residence and prepared to breach, Officer Dobbins banged on the door and announced police search warrant. Even though they did obtain a, a warrant that would have allowed them to no-knock, that they actually did not. They actually did knock on the door and announce their presence, which was what we did on all our warrants. It was just a rarity that, that even if we got a warrant that allowed us to no-knock, we were still going to knock and we were still going to announce. Once the wrought iron first door was opened and removed, Officer Dobbins again announced police search warrant prior to ramming and opening the wooden door. As the officers made entry into the residence, they again announced their presence and purpose. The officers first cleared the living room and the kitchen. Officer Goodwin and Sergeant Mobley then noticed an individual, later to be identified as co-defendant Willie Braddock, in the bedroom at the end of the hall and immediately instructed Braddock to get on the ground. As Officer Goodwin and Sergeant Mobley secured Braddock, they heard several shots. Sergeant Mobley looked back in the direction of the shots, saw the victim on the floor, and heard her wince twice. When Officer Dobbins heard the shots, he hugged the wall for concealment and cover. He then heard someone say, get the victim out of here, and noticed Lang lying on the ground, half in the door and half out of the door of the first bedroom. And what happened when they breached and entered the house, the shield man, the shotgun man, they saw one of the suspects and they went all the way down the hall. And that's incumbent upon the officers coming in behind them to clear doorways. 
And that's what happened in this situation here. When officers reached that bedroom door in an attempt, I'm assuming, to clear it, that's when the shots were fired. And that's when Officer Vrooman and Officer Lang were hit. All right, continuing on. When Officer Dobbins reached the victim, she was not breathing. He attempted to locate her wound, but was unable to determine where she had been shot. Now, unlike on the movies, uh, you'll see this issue come up where someone will be shot and there's no squirting blood, there's no large blood mass. When Officer Dobbins called for an ambulance, Officer Hardison, who had been positioned around the perimeter of the house, entered the house and helped Officer Dobbins move the victim outside. Once outside, Officer Dobbins removed the victim's helmet and vest, but were unable to locate the victim's wound. When asked to describe the victim's condition at that point, Officer Dobbins would later state she wasn't there. As Officer Dobbins was attending to the victim, the remaining officers converged on the room where the shots had originated. Sergeant Dotson was the first officer to enter the room, followed by Officer Goodwin. According to Sergeant Dotson, the first shots were fired at the team after Sergeant Vrooman stepped in the hallway once he had cleared the kitchen. After the initial round of shots, Sergeant Dotson proceeded down the hallway where he observed the victim lying on her back and not moving. Sergeant Dotson stepped over the victim and entered the room and found the defendant crouched against the wall with a weapon pointed towards the door. Folks, what we're doing here, or what the appellate court's doing is they're giving versions of the story from the entry officers. So obviously now we've now went to Sergeant Dotson's statement. So he steps over Officer Lane and goes into the room. That's even as officers are moving in to try to evac Officer Lane from the house. Sergeant Dotson shot the defendant two or three times, causing the defendant to fall to the floor. When the defendant fell, his weapon fell out of his hand. Sergeant Dotson didn't notice that Officer Goodwin had also entered the room. When Detective Mobley finally entered the room, he found Sergeant Dotson holding the defendant at gunpoint. Seeing that the defendant was safely detained, Detective Mobley and Officer Goodwin finished clearing the house. Officer Lang and Vrooman were transported to the med. Officer Lang was pronounced dead. Officer Vrooman recovered physically from his wound, returned to work briefly, then medically retired from the department. The defendant, Campbell, was indicted for one count of first degree murder, five counts of attempted first degree murder, six counts of employing a firearm during the commission of a dangerous felony, possession of marijuana with intent to sell, and possession of marijuana with intent to deliver. Now, after the trial, the jury convicted the defendant of second-degree murder, two counts of attempted second-degree murder, two counts of employing a firearm during the commission of a dangerous felony, one count of possession of a firearm with intent to go armed, possession of marijuana with intent to sell, and possession of marijuana with intent to deliver. Now, counts five, seven, and nine were all d dismissed. Five, seven, and nine, those counts were all counts of employing a firearm during the commission of a dangerous felony. His entire sentence is only 40 years. Now, despite the fact he got a sweetheart deal from the jury, he's 
has appealed, and I'm sure will continue to appeal. The, uh, the appellate court who first heard the case, they uh, affirmed the lower court's decision. So the defendant has struck out in his first attempt to get his sentence overturned, thankfully. On a personal note, I was a lieutenant over Vice Narcotics Team 3 at the time of the shooting. I had worked with Officer Lang on many occasions, both as a fill-in lieutenant for search warrants her team was executing, and then she had worked with my team on several larger operations. And I can assure you that was one of the saddest days of my life. Officer Lang left behind four daughters. Martoya Lang, born April 7, 1980, into watch December 14, 2012.